morning, good afternoon, and good evening to all of our attendees joining us today for this latest Data Science Central webinar. This is Bill Voorhees, your host. I'm the Editorial Director with Data Science Central and also Chief Data Scientist for Data Magnum. You know, I'd like to start off our event today by thanking Teradata for sponsoring today's event. Teradata is an integral supporter of the Data Science Central community, and we're honored to have them sponsoring our event today. You know, I'd also like to take this opportunity and to mention and show our appreciation for some of our other recent sponsors, including uh, Alteryx, Tableau, IBM, Anadot, Dell Statistica, and Exaptive, to name just a few. Now, our past webinars are available on demand at datasciencecentral.com, and if you haven't had the opportunity to view them, I encourage you to take a look. They provide very useful insight into a wide variety of topics of interest to our data science community. Today's webinar uh, is entitled, Fastest Growing Open Source SQL on Hadoop by Teradata. And before we begin, I'd like to briefly review the format of today's webinar. Uh, today's event will be an hour long. Uh, we'll have two presenters that I'll introduce in just a minute. There'll be uh, 10 to 15 minutes of questions and answers following the presentation. And this event is being recorded and will be available on datasciencecentral.com later this afternoon following today's live event. You know, I'd also like to encourage our attendees to provide questions throughout the presentation, as we'll be reviewing and presenting those on your behalf during the Q&A portion of today's event. Well, I'm very pleased to introduce today's speakers, Mark Shaneman of Teradata and John Hitchingham of FINRA. Now, Mark Shaneman is the program manager for Teradata's alignment with the SQL on Hadoop engine Presto, as well as Teradata's Query Grid, Teradata App Center, and competitive programs. Now, as part of Teradata's unified data architecture team, Mark looks after the marketing, education, promotion, and strategy surrounding the uptake and usage of Presto, as well as Teradata's query grid and app center solutions. He also manages all of the competitive marketing programs, dealing with the migration from Oracle, SQL Server, DB2, Natiza, and other platforms to Teradata. Now, John Hitchingham has worked at FINRA for over 13 years. He's presently the Director of Performance Engineering, leading FINRA's team that's providing solutions as part of a two-and-a-half-year initiative to migrate FINRA's marketing regulation technology systems to uh, the AWS cloud. Now, previously, uh, John held numerous positions at FINRA, including Director of Data and Analytics, Director of Member Regulatory Systems, as well as Director of Shared Service. So Mark, John, thanks for being with us today. Today we're going to learn about the fastest growing open source SQL on Hadoop solution in the market, Presto. Uh, so in today's DSC webinar, we'll be providing an overview of the Presto query engine, what it is and its origins. Uh, the speakers will share the motivations for Facebook to create Presto, as well as how they and other companies use it. They'll also dive into the Presto architecture, functionality, and future mode wrap, uh, roadmap. The Financial Industry Regulatory Authority, FINRA, uh, will provide some real-world insight into their Presto environment. So in this webinar, uh, John will be discussing their decision to migrate from an on-prem cloud to a cloud, to a cloud-based analytic environment using tools such as Presto. Uh, they will examine their use of Presto within the Amazon cloud as part of their data warehousing solution and will share how they address security concerns when dealing with financial data within a cloud-based analytic solutions. So, Mark, with that, I'm going to turn it over to you. You can begin as soon as you're ready to go. Well, thank you. Um, well, let's jump right into uh, you know Presto, and let me give you an overview of what Presto is. And... Um, you know, some of the insight into why Teradata decided to, uh, you know, become part of this whole open source project. So uh, what is Presto? Well, Presto is a 100% open source SQL on Hadoop solution. It was uh, developed by Facebook, and some of the key components that make uh, Presto a great engine is that it is, you know, it was built for performance and scale. One of the key components um, in the roadmap of Facebook building it out was really performance, performance, and they deal with huge volumes of data at Facebook. So it was 
large amounts of data, very, very high performance. Um, one of the other components is cross-platform uh, query capability, and I'll get into that later, how Presto not only can query data that exists within Hadoop environments, but can also query data that exists in other data sources, such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, and other repositories. Um, it is a full open source project. It's licensed under the Apache license and hosted on GitHub as well. Um, so let, let's look a little at the, um, the origin. So Facebook, were, uh, was the, the, um, Facebook is where uh, uh, Presto actually um, originated. And um, F uh, Facebook was also the uh, company that actually created Hive as well. So at one point they were using Hive, and after a while they just realized it didn't have the interactive uh, query performance that they needed for their um, end users. So they decided to start from the ground up and build um, Presto. So they started with MPP database principles and leveraged those to architect the Presto query engine. And then in a, um, about almost a year and a half ago, uh, Teradata came on board, and we decided we were going to be a major contributor to the Presto project. So we've been contributing a large amount of code and uh, support uh, toward the project because we really think it's got a, a great uh, potential within the marketplace as well as we see our customers continuing to use it and leverage it um, for their infrastructures and getting great value out of it. So there's a, a large growing community of users behind the Presto project. Um, when we first came on almost a year and a half ago, you saw some of the, the leading um, dot-com companies, such as Facebook and Netflix and Uber and Twitter, uh, Groupon, etc., Airbnb, leveraging uh, Presto. And then the community has continued to grow. We see companies like Bloomberg now using Presto, NASDAQ, um, Comcast, and, of course, FINRA, who is uh, actually John going to talk about their implementation of Presto as well. So one of the, the great things about Presto as a query engine and an open source query engine is that there's this huge growing community of users and contributors behind the project. So there's a lot of legs and, and support behind the project. So just some of those uh, users and some of the production environments that you can see um, for example, Facebook has a huge Presto environment. They actually have multiple production clusters and with hundreds of nodes in total. Um, and the number here of 300 petabytes was actually a number that I got from Dane Sundstrom. And he said that's maybe three years old. So you can think of if Facebook was using uh, Presto about three years ago on 300 petabytes of data, how large their environment is today. It might be a zettabyte or, or larger. So it's really proven in huge scale environments, in these huge scale production environments to perform. Um, they have uh, thousands of internal uh, daily active users within it and you know, tens to hundreds of concurrent queries at one point in time. Netflix is another large user of uh, Presto. They have a 250 plus node uh, cluster in the EC2, uh, 40 plus petabytes of data. Twitter is another one. Uh, over uh, 200 plus nodes on prem using the Parquet uh, file format. Uber is another one. They're a large contributor as well, contributing some specific uh, geospatial uh, capabilities to the Presto project. And they have 100 plus nodes, uh, you know, with 2,000 plus queries a day um, in their Presto cluster. And then, of course, uh, FINRA, and they'll, John will talk about their environment later. They have 120 plus nodes in the AWS environment. So you can see there's numerous customers who are using Presto in these very, very large scale environments and getting large value out of it. So here's the Presto architecture. So if you look at the Presto architecture, you'll see that it's architected very much like a traditional MPP database um, solution. So you have a coordinator node. Um, this is very similar to what you would see maybe for, from a, a Natiza or a Greenplum, where you have a single coordinator node and multiple worker nodes within an environment. 
So you have your coordinator node, which actually has, uh, you know, your parser and analyzer would take in the query, do the planning, do the scheduling, and then send out the work to the worker nodes. The worker nodes actually would connect to the data source, whether that's a Hadoop or other data sources, and then actually uh, in, in, in process, in memory, do all the processing, and then push the result set back to the client. So the great thing about the... Um, the Presto environment is the more work you need done, the more you scale out your worker nodes and the more processing that you can actually get done within the environment. One other unique component of the Presto uh, solution set is it's not just limited to querying data that exists within Hadoop. When Facebook first architected um, Presto, they, its main job was for querying data that existed within Hadoop but they also built it out to be able to query numerous other data sources. And the open source community has actually built out numerous connectors that enable Presto to query other data sources as well. So, for example, now at Facebook, they have a dedicated Presto cluster that is just querying sharded MySQL. So it's not just limited to querying data that exists within a Hadoop environment. So Presto actually has numerous connectors that are available that enable users to actually query a, a wide range of data sources. So you could query uh, Cassandra, Kafka, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Redis, MongoDB, Elasticsearch, Accumulo, and data that exists in Amazon S3 as well. Um, and the, the number of connectors are continuing to grow as uh, people in the community have needs for Presto to query other data sources and build out um, specific connectors that enable them to query those data sources. Another unique component is you can actually execute a query that can span multiple data sources within a single query. So you could actually write a query within Presto, which could reach out and grab data that exists within your Hadoop environment and grab data that exists within your MySQL environment. And based on the specific connector, how much predicate push down and processing you can push down within uh, those, those uh, data sources is specific to the connector itself. But Presto does try to push down as much processing down into that engine. So, for example, within a Hadoop environment, Presto will take advantage of, let's say, you, you're using ORC or Parquet, you will do partition pruning and predicate push down within uh, the Hadoop environment and bring back just the data result sets that are needed to do that processing. Um, the same thing would be true for something like MySQL. It will push down as much processing as it can within MySQL and just bring back that specific result set. So it's a very powerful engine in enabling not only for users to get great, scalable, interactive performance against data that exists within a Hadoop environment, but also enabling them to query across multiple platforms if they choose and get result sets and join across something like MySQL and Hadoop if they, they choose as well. So that's a very, very powerful component of uh, the Presto platform, its ability not only to query Hadoop, but other numerous data sources. So Teradata, as a company, what we do is we actually offer enterprise support for open source Presto. So if uh, a customer or user decides to put Presto in production, and as an open source solution, they want actual support, be able to pick up the phone or send in a ticket and say, hey, something isn't working correctly, we actually offer enterprise support for it. And as the, you know, one of the largest contributors to the, uh, the actual open source project, we actually have the expertise surrounding the Presto and the Presto engine to actually offer that type of support. So what is the Teradata distribution of Presto? Well, what we do is we actually take a snapshot of the main branch, and we bring that down, and we go through a rigorous test and bug fix and stabilization process. Sometimes we add functionality that our engineers have been working on that's not yet made it back into the, the main branch yet, and we make that available for free and download off of our website, teradata.com presto, oh, uh, slash presto. And we actually offer enterprise support for that distribution. Um, you can download that version for free, 
and use it as much as you want. But if you choose to get enterprise support, we offer that enterprise support for that distribution. And um, so we actually work very, very closely with uh, Facebook on all the, the contributions that we're making to the project as well. So right now, um, we actually offer support for uh, our distribution of Presto running on numerous um, uh, distributions of Hadoop. And one of the great things about Presto, and I didn't mention this earlier, it is Hadoop uh, distribution agnostic. So it's not tied to a single distribution. So for example, when you look at something like Impala, it's really just tied to Cloudera. Great engine, but just tied to uh, Cloudera. When you look at something like Presto, it's very distribution ag agnostic. So it can run on Horton, Cloudera, it can run on IBM's Big Insights, etc. So right now, uh, Teradata, we actually offer our distribution of Presto and support for it on Cloudera, Hortonworks, and of course our own Teradata appliances, IBM Big Insights, and Amazon EMR. Um, we're actually in the future going to be offering support on um, MapReduce, um, MapR's distribution, excuse, excuse me, uh, of Hadoop as well. So let's look a little at the roadmap, because one of the big things that Teradata has been doing is actually trying to put a lot of enterprise features um, into the uh, open source Presto engine and contribute a lot. We actually have 20 full-time developers that are specifically dedicated to developing code for the Presto project. So when we came on, we noticed that there were uh, numerous things that uh, were kind of missing from the Presto engine. One of the things that uh, you know, Facebook does is they develop specifically for what they need within their environment and continue to do that for the Presto engine. So their, their goals are really surrounding high, high performance, scalability, um, et cetera. But some of the enterprise fit type features were not some of the things that were high on their list to actually add to the Presto engine. So that's where Teradata really came in when we started to contribute to the Presto project. So some of the first things that we actually contributed were uh, an installer, um, created a lot of documentation surrounding the actual uh, engine itself and using it, some monitoring support tools surrounding it. And then we actually uh, put in uh, some management tools. Um, we actually created Yarn integration so you can actually run uh, Presto in a Yarn container within a Hadoop environment. And then some of the other key things is there were not enterprise class drivers, ODBC and JDBC drivers, yet for Presto. So we actually uh, partnered with uh, a company by the name of Simba, basically develops the drivers for pretty much everybody. We partnered with them, worked with them, and paid them to actually develop and build enterprise class ODBC and JDBC drivers specific for the Presto engine. So once we had actually created those drivers, it opened up Presto to a larger community of users because they could, be, they could now begin to use their enterprise uh, BI tools within the Presto um, infrastructure. So we actually started to work with a number of our existing Teradata BI partners and certify Presto on top of um, those uh, BI tools. So we went through a number of BI uh, certification, and then we actually worked on some security features. Um, we came out with enterprise class uh, JDBC driver and worked on a number of new connectors for the Presto project. So some of the contributions that we're going to be making in the future <coughs> surround um, continuing the um, uh, trend around security. So what we did add, for example, um, previously we added uh, support for Kerberized clusters. So you can run Presto within a Kerberized cluster. And now we actually, in our latest release, we came out with LDAP support. So you can actually leverage LDAP within a Presto environment. Uh, so um, there's numerous things that we've been working on and going to be contributing to the project uh, just recently and in the future, such as an improved and updated Cassandra connector. Uh, we're always continuing to improve performance tweaks within the environment and, of course, uh, improving SQL coverage, uh, continuing to improve 
the overall uh, ANSI SQL coverage of the Presto engine. And one thing that I did forget to mention is one of the other unique capabilities of Presto is that it is an ANSI SQL engine. So you're not using any type of um, you know, uh, proprietary SQL-like language like HiveQL. It is ANSI SQL, and that's what you leverage within the Presto environment. Um, so, so in our phase five, in the future, some of the things that we're going to be contributing to the open source project are um, imp uh, a, a robust cost base optimizer, um, spill to disk, because Presto is a full in-memory engine. So if uh, memory actually, you exceed memory within a single query, it's going to page off to disk for that intermediate result set. Um, and continually improving performance tweaks and, of course, improving SQL coverage. And then later next year, we're looking at things such as advanced workload management, um, continually improving the optimizer and optimizer performance, um, new connectors as well, and uh, numerous performance tweaks, etc. cetera. Um, one thing else I, I forgot to mention is that on our roadmap, we're actually looking to build out a SQL Server connector for Presto as well. And we're looking at the beginning of next year to actually have a SQL Server connector for Presto. So not only will um, users be able to query MySQL and PostgreSQL, but they'll be able to leverage Presto to query SQL Server as well. So that's another big thing that we have on the roadmap that we're going to be contributing to the open source project. And I might have mentioned this earlier, all the contributions that Teradata makes to the Presto project are all put back into the, the main branch and we make available to the open source project. Um, everything that we've been building on the Presto engine, we contribute right back to the main branch and is made open source. The only thing that has not been open source are the ODBC and JDBC drivers. That is because they have proprietary code that was developed by Simba, and so they cannot be open sourced. They are free. You can download them from free from the teradata.com slash presto website, but they are not open source. So, but everything else, we contribute right back to the, uh, the main project. So uh, one of the things that I did mention was uh, BI tool certification. So here's just a number of the uh, vendors who've actually certified on top of Presto, including Tableau, Zoom Data, Looker, Click, MicroStrategy, um, um, Microsoft Power BI. Um, OBIEE has actually been tested on top of uh, Presto, but is not officially certified yet. But we're looking uh, you know, for um, Oracle to make that decision in the future if they're going to certify OBIE officially on top of Presto. But numerous uh, BI vendors have certified on top of them and, um, and continue to certify on top of the engine because of the large growing community. So our latest release of Presto is our 152T, which we came out with uh, about a month and a half ago or so. And Teradata actually releases our distribution of Presto on about a three-month basis. Um, the main branch, which you see on GitHub, that uh, uh, the main branch, they release, you know, Facebook releases on a biweekly basis, or it can be every two weeks, every three weeks or so. And, you know, one of the things that we find is, you know, a lot of experimental stuff sometimes goes into that main branch. So it might break something or, uh, you know, something goes wrong. Um, so what we do is we try to make available a stable, tested release that uh, is production ready. And we recommend that any of our um, users, our customers, look at um, our distribution, and not only because we offer enterprise support for it, but also because we don't release every two weeks or so, and it's a very, very stable release. So, you know, most of our customers who are putting environments into production aren't updating their environment like Facebook. You know, Facebook and Twitter and, uh, and Netflix are very dynamic companies and very, you know, uh, large tech companies. So they have the ability to have the engineers that can update everything on a two-week basis or three-week basis with their, in their environment. But we make available um, in in our environment, our distribution every three months, and we find that's a, a much more manageable upgrade path if customers do choose to upgrade on a three-month basis or even longer as well. 
So some of the new highlights for our uh, distribution that we came out with about a month and a half or two months ago, as I mentioned earlier, LDAP authentication was a key component that we came out with just recently within um, and made that available with our distribution. Uh, SQL additions such as correlated subqueries, exist and accept were some of the key things we added. Uh, connector additions, um, the Hive connector can now write to bucketed tables, and MySQL and PostgreSQL um, have now insert support, and we added that as well. Uh, we improved window function performance. Um, we actually have now a new Presto web interface that you can uh, look at and, and utilize as well. That's available on our distribution. Um, you know, Presto and Query Grid are fully um, uh, supported in AWS and the Amazon Cloud. And just, you know, we're continuing to do numerous bug fixes and other improvements um, to the Presto engine. Um, so one of the other key things that Teradata makes available is when Teradata customers want to query from their existing Teradata environment or other platforms within their Teradata unified data architecture, we make a product by the name of Query Grid available. Query Grid is a product that enables customers to query from that uh, existing Teradata platform to other data sources, leveraging things such as uh, the Presto engine or Hive or our other query engines. So we actually did integration with Presto, and now we actually talk about Presto and Query Grid in a synergistic way where customers can be working in their Teradata data warehouse, query out leveraging Query Grid that leverages Presto to then query any of the data sources that Presto uh, then can uh, touch on. So uh, a customer could be working in Teradata, execute a query that would reach out to Presto, that would then dynamically reach out to um, Hadoop, do the push down within Hadoop, processing within Presto, then that result set from Presto would be pushed into Spool within the Teradata um, data warehousing environment, database environment, and then the final join or... Um, you know, aggregation process would occur, and then the result set would go back to uh, the, uh, the client or the end user. Um, that query grid environment actually allows it to be bidirectional when leveraging Presto as well. So a user could actually be within Presto in their Hadoop environment executing queries and say, mm, I need some data that exists within my Teradata data warehousing environment. They could dynamically execute a query, which would reach out to, to Teradata, would actually execute that query and push down that processing within the Teradata data warehouse, then push that data result set fully parallel through that data fabric to Presto, and then that result set would be, would, you know, be joined with the data within Presto and the result set given back to the client. So it's a very powerful tool that we make available to enable users within a Teradata infrastructure to be able to leverage the power of Presto and the power of other platforms such as Hive within their environment or their Aster platform within their environment and query and actually be able to dynamically access and leverage the platforms that are there such as um, Hive and, and Presto and then Presto's ability to access numerous other platforms such as MySQL, PostgreSQL, etc. So another component of uh, Query Grid, as I mentioned ear, uh, earlier, its integration is actually fully parallel. So when a user is actually executing a query against Presto, um, the query would actually execute in, in the Presto environment, and then data type conversion would cap it on the actual Hadoop side within Presto, and all that data is pushed in parallel to the uh, Teradata environment, and then the final processing is done. So one of the things that we've really spent a lot of time in is making this data fabric between Presto and between the Teradata uh, database engine as fully parallel and as performant as possible. So if a customer or if a user has Teradata as a database and data warehouse and chooses to leverage that with Presto, there's actually that data fabric that connects the two of them and uh, enables them to leverage much more easily both platforms for both query processing and data movement. 
So that's a little insight into uh, Presto, what Teradata is doing around Presto, as well as uh, some of the uh, added value software such as Query Grid that we bring to the table that enable customers to do unique things within their Teradata Unified Data Architecture. So now we're going to hand it over to John so he can give you some real-world insight into um, what FINRA is really doing around their Presto environment and some of the neat things that they're doing with, uh, with Presto. So, John? Thanks, Mark. Um, so uh, this is John Hitchingham from FINRA, and uh, what I want to do is uh, spend a little bit of time sharing with everybody uh, our, our data lake architecture in the cloud, where we use Presto as part of that, and uh, our, our relationship with uh, Teradata, why, why we, uh, we're so interested in Teradata's uh, contributions to Presto. So I think you know, sort of the first question is, who is FINRA? Uh, FINRA is the Financial Industry Regulatory Authority. Uh, it's an organization, a regulatory organization responsible for regulating over 3,900 broker-dealers in the U.S. Uh, securities firms, over 60, uh, 640,000 broker-dealer individuals. And as part of our market regulation technology area, we look at 99% of all equity trades in the U.S. and 65% of all options trades uh, looking for fraud, uh, market manipulation, insider trading, and abuse. Uh, that can be up to 75 billion events per day that we process. Um, you know, and six terabytes of data a day accumulating to petabytes and petabytes of, of storage. Uh, so the mission of FINRA's Market Regulation Technology Group is to support FINRA's uh, business line uh, in this activity. And the way we do that is with our uh, scalable data lake analytics architecture in Amazon. So if we go back a couple years, as, as uh, Bill mentioned at the beginning, uh, we just completed a two-and-a-half-year effort to migrate our market regulation technology systems into the Amazon cloud. And as part of that, we uh, make a con made a conscious choice to move away um, from the uh, configuration of data warehouse appliances that we had uh, in our data centers that we ran ourselves and move to an architecture that could really leverage the cloud to scale analytics uh, regardless of data volume uh, and compute needs. One of the challenges that we often encountered in our uh, on-premises environment was the fluctuating market volumes. They could vary as much as two to three times you know, per day, and we would never know when a heavy market day would be. Uh, additionally, we often had needs for uh, business users to do analytics processing that was out of cycle. So always finding kind of batch window schedules and windows to balance all the workloads was very challenging. Um, you know, not cost efficient to size capacity at absolute peak, so we were somewhere in the middle. But as we do that, one of the challenges that we find, again, is we're always constantly spending lots of resources trying to coordinate that activity. Uh, so again, you know, with a scalable data lake architecture in the cloud, we have the flexibility that we need. So the architecture is really based on scalable storage, keeping the data on S3, scalable compute layer uh, for analytics, including Presto and a data catalog and management service that lets us track and find all the data in the cloud. As I mentioned, one of the big things that we did as part of our cloud architecture was uh, develop our own uh, data catalog service. That would allow us to track and manage the data sets that we were storing out in the cloud uh, in a platform independent sort of way. So we developed a system uh, called, we call it now HERD, available for download on GitHub. And what that lets us do is it lets data producers within the organization register data uh, that's being published for use and lets consumers register data that they're using so we can track data lineage as part of that process. Additionally, it acts as a repository where we can store technical metadata um, about the data sets that we're storing so we can basically automate the running of the analytics clusters uh, against the data on S3, and we'll talk about that in more detail in, in a couple slides. So if we kind of go to a little bit deeper into our architecture, we run Hive, we run Presto, we run Spark uh, in our environment. Uh, key to it is we keep all of our data uh, on S3. Uh, so uh, we run our queries from these query clusters directly against S3. The only times we're really processing data locally on the cluster 
uh, is for intermediate you know, steps that might be part of a batch process. But we're always checkpointing and persisting the data back to S3, uh, and that's our, our analytics store, our, our operational store that, that we run against for the vast majority of our workloads. Uh, and as I said, we have catalog services that basically the query clusters interact with in order to access the data that's out there on S3. A um, little more details uh, on one of those catalog services. Uh, as people who are familiar may know, the, uh, the Hive has a Metastore service that is sort of a, a common way for uh, analytics tools to integrate in and understand data availability. Uh, so we run a, a single uh, enterprise Metastore service that we can connect to from Presto, we connect to from Spark, we connect to from Hive. Uh, so that allows us to bring the different uh, tools to bear against the same data sets based on you know wh whichever one they're they're best suited for without having to replicate data around to multiple places or keep separate you know directories and catalogs of of the data. So you know one of the things that we do as part of all the data that we store in the cloud, we work to make sure that again we use S3 as our our store to hold the, the gold copies of the data. So why S3? Because of its high availability uh, and durability. Uh, as I said, we register the data in our data catalog. Um, so we keep business and technical metadata there that, that we can use. Um, we all use the ability to, in our data catalog, to track the versions of the metadata that we store out on S3. Uh, we store it uh, in uh, text format, so delimited, basically CSV or uh, tab, tab uh, separated format, uh, so that if we, as tools change over time, you know, our golden copy version of the data is not locked into a particular format. Uh, that lets us be able to go back and as tools change and evolve, be able to query it. We store it in a BZIP2 compressed format to allow easy splitting by MapReduce where we, we use our MapReduce jobs against it. Um, so again, we take the data, we store it on S3 uh, in a sort of lowest common denominator format that's very technology agnostic so we can bring lots of tools to, to bear against it um, in querying. So as I mentioned before, you know, what, what we do is we keep the data on S3. Uh, so what we do is that we keep the data there. We define uh, in the Hive Metastore uh, everything as an external table. Uh, so external table is a concept that pertains in Presto. Uh, it can be also used in Hive. It can also be used in Spark. So we're able to bring up a Presto cluster, and we're able to essentially run it directly on data, keeping the data on S3 without having to copy it into the cluster when we bring it up. We're able to store that uh, DDL in the Hive Metastore, so we bring the Presto cluster up, communicate, get it, read it, and we're able to ex start executing queries very quickly rather than have to do a big setup step in order to, to start processing. Keeping the data on S3, though, in that uh, comma-separated or tab-separated text format, though, isn't always necessarily that the most efficient way to store it. So where we need to, we uh, do conversions to other formats. We, we actually use ORC uh, for more efficient query. Um, as Mark mentioned, you know, you can basically change the, the format, and Presto is able to take advantage of predicate pushdown for, for formats like ORC and Parquet. Uh, so we do that to improve the performance. In addition, we may change some of the, the sort values uh, or the partitioning of the data to, to get more efficient query on it. So in terms of the technologies that we bring to bear and, and how we use them, uh, we really use Hive for our batch analytics, uh, where we you know, can run jobs for a very long period of time. Interactive response isn't important. Uh, that kind of forms the backbone of our, our batch workloads. We uh, use Spark for machine learning uh, in, in small areas. Uh, so there's a nice set of tools there that, that integrate well for, for the machine learning domain. And we use Presto for interactive analytics. Uh, the, the response time that we can get out of Presto uh, and you know, the, the maturity of the product that we're seeing uh, works very well, very well for that use case. Um, so we're you know, kind of leveraging that for, for the interactive use case. 
again, going against data out there on it. In terms of the configuration we use, because we are running in the cloud, we have a lot of flexibility throughout the day of the capacity of our infrastructure. So in, we run our Presto on EMR, and as part of that, we keep a certain number of nodes, 62 of them, online all the time during the day and night. And then during the day, we can also flex out uh, to that 120 node capacity that was mentioned earlier uh, to, to accommodate increased workload during the day. Uh, so we only pay for those additional nodes during the day when we're up and we're running them. Uh, so that gives us, you know, much better ability to match our capacity to our actual workload as it changes. And if for some reason there's an unanticipated spike in, in demand, we can always scale it out further, um, you know, very quickly if we need to. Uh, we run uh, on R3.4x large instance types uh, in Amazon. Uh, those give us a lot of memory capacity, uh, which is great for Presto. Uh, so when we do our queries, uh, it turns out that really uh, after six months now of running on Presto in the cloud, there's very few use cases from our work from our user base where uh, they they can't really run a query in Presto even with the uh, in-memory limitation. Um, there's very few cases where users have to fall back to Hive. That's that's been what our experience is. Uh, but it, you know, as Mark mentioned, you know, we're, we are looking forward to to spill the disk coming on the roadmap, which should even further increase the ability to, to work on, on Presto for, for all of our workloads, even though it covers a lot of the workloads that we have today. So as I mentioned, you know, when we started uh, looking at uh, query technologies, as, as Mark kind of gave a great idea of the landscape that's out there, uh, we were really interested in Presto and its capabilities and its performance, uh, its ability to integrate in with S3 and uh, be platform agnostic. Uh, but as Mark mentioned, one of the things that, you know, as a, you know, financial regulator, we needed, we were seeing that it was lacking a lot of, you know, sort of enterprise features that we would need to, to adopt. And by working with Teradata, you know, we've been able to, to address a lot of key features on the roadmap um, that, that have allowed us to deploy and use Presto here. So we're currently running uh, version 152T of Teradata. Uh, and part of that, you know, working with Teradata, we're able to, uh, they were able to deliver encrypted JDBC connections, LDAP authentication, uh, along with uh, some improvements to window function performance uh, specific to our use case. Um, you know, as we go forward, I mentioned the spill the disk capability that we're, we're looking forward to, uh, along with some additional security encryption items that the Teradata is working on as, as part of the as part of the Presto community. Uh, you know, we're committed to, to open source software for, for a lot of our projects here at FINRA. And again, the fact that uh, the Teradata Presto is available for download is open source and that they work with the other members of the community uh, is something that we found, we found very attractive. Maybe just want to spend just a little bit and kind of give people the idea of some of the performance that, that we see with Presto. Uh, these are some examples of some queries that, that we run on our cluster. In this case, this is a, a, a test cluster, 100 node cluster of R3, 4X larges, going against you know, over 2 billion rows uh, of data out on S3. Uh, and by running these queries, we can see that we can get response times back uh, in as little as a few seconds um, for, for some of the simpler queries. So we're able to go across a large set of data out on S3 without having to take the time to load it into uh, the cluster for processing um, and get, you know, sub 10 second response times for a lot of queries with ORC. Um, this also talks about, as you can see, the, the larger times if we go against that text format of data that we have. So it talks about the efficiencies that can be achieved by converting to a uh, query, you know, friendly format uh, such as ORC or, or Parquet. Security uh, is, is important to us. Uh, so in our architecture, we use S3 encryption uh, for encrypting the data at rest out on S3. Uh, when we do have to occasionally spill data to disk on the, the clusters, we use Lux encryption to encrypt the disk locally, uh, HTTPS and, and encrypted JDBC for transit. Um, in our Presto configuration, we use a secure LDAP for authentication against our internal corporate active directory. 
Uh, and then within, uh, Presto has the ability, as I mentioned, to integrate in with the, the Hive Metastore security model. So we use a group-based authorization uh, along with the Hive Metastore authorization uh, to control access to, to data within the, the Presto cluster itself. And also just wanted to touch on a little bit sort of some of the, the tools we built around our Presto usage. We used Splunk very heavily for application logging. And one of the things we've been able to do is we've been able to, to build dashboards that we use to monitor Presto usage uh, in the organization, the number of queries, the number of users. And we can drill down and we can get more detail on the actual queries that they're running. So we've been able to you know, get a large degree of transparency available to us that we weren't able to with some of our, our systems that we were running on premises before. Uh, but this makes it really easy to kind of see very quickly what's going on on the cluster and be able to support our users um, in, in their, as they go about doing their work through the day. Um, so I just really want to take that opportunity to, to share some of the you know success that we've had working with Presto and our data lake architecture in the cloud. And I'll turn it back over to Bill to moderate for any questions. Hey, uh, Mark, John, thanks for that excellent presentation. Uh, we'll get start with uh, today's Q&A session. And I want to thank the audience for their participation. We've had a lot of questions that have come in during this presentation. And we'll do our best to get through uh, all of them in the time remaining. So uh, during this Q&A session, I'll leave this screen up with contact information for Mark and John uh, if you'd like to contact them following today's webinar. So let's get started. Um, Boy, there were a lot of features that uh, you discussed uh, in Presto. Um, so, uh, Mark, let me just start by saying if, if uh, an audience member is interested in uh, working with Presto, uh, where can they find Teradata's distribution of Presto? Sure. Um, the, the distribution that I mentioned is available at www.teradata.com slash Presto. And we make available um, both... Uh, an environment, that you, a VM environment that you can download and actually you know, test and play around with, um, as well as a server environment that you can download and uh, then install. And um, all of that is free and open source that you can download from teradata.com slash presto. We also make the enterprise class ODBC and JDBC drivers uh, available as well for download on that same page that you can leverage. Um, those are the, the drivers that... Uh, you know, the, the encrypted JDBC that uh, um, John mentioned earlier um, is all available for free and download on teradata.com slash presto. Well, Mark, thanks for that uh, great answer. Now, you know, I've got to say, uh, presto is very impressive and, you know, probably second only to the basic uh, NoSQL architecture in Hadoop. I think that uh, SQL on Hadoop may be uh, the most important thing that's that's happened in the NoSQL environment in a long time, just because it allowed so uh, many SQL users to come back into the picture. Um, but it's not the only product uh, that's out there, uh, but it's certainly the most modern. So you talked about using Presto and Spark SQL and Hive at the same time. Uh, there's also Impala and Drill. Y you talked about how Presto was uh, ANSI SQL. Uh, we talked a little bit about response times, but could you both give us a little review of uh, when and under what circumstances Presto is better than Spark SQL is better than Hive, and then perhaps even Impala and Drill? Yeah, I, I can. This is John from Finra. I can speak a little bit to to sort of our experience that that, that we had. Uh, so, so we were early users of Hive. Uh, and as I said before, we, we found it was really good for the batch use case, but even with uh, the various improvements over the years, they, we were still having challenges using it for interactive query use case, getting response times uh, in, in a few seconds where, where it was needed. So we looked at other options that were available. Uh, Presto was, worked well for us in terms of performance, uh, with its in-memory in memory MPP architecture. And again, we were very interested to, to see a lot of backing between a lot of different players um, out in the community. Uh, so that kind of caused us to, to, to look at it over some of the other uh, interactive SQL engines that were out there. Uh, for Spark, uh, certainly that's an evolving product. And uh, Spark SQL is, is relatively new. 
Uh, and what we found is that, you know, the combination of Spark SQL along with some of the other features available in Spark is good for sort of a data science use case working, you know, with a, a data set in memory uh, and bringing to bear some of the other tools that are part of the Spark ecosystem. But if you have a community of users that really just wants to have reliable, um, robust SQL queries, uh, interactive SQL query performance, uh, Presto is, is, is a good candidate for that, and that's why we selected that. Terrific. And, and would you like to comment as, as if there are audience members that are still using Impala and Drill? Uh, is there any reason to keep doing that, or should they be migrating? Sure. Th this yeah. is Mark. Um, oh, sorry. John, you can... Well, I, I was just going to say, I mean, I think, you know, we're, we're as, a, as a technology organization, we're always looking and kind of keeping up on the market and see as things evolve. Uh, so, I mean, we're, we're working with Presto now, but we always, you know, it's a very evolving space. Uh, so we, we keep our eyes open to, to what other players are doing in the market, too. Mark, anything to add on that? Sure. And and, and when it comes to uh, Impala and Drill, I'll, I'll mention a couple things. I mean, Impala is a great engine. Um, we've actually done some benchmarking with Impala as well. And as Teradata is an organization, we actually sell our Teradata appliance with Cloudera that has Impala on it as well. Um, but, uh, you know, and it's a very, very high-performance SQL on a dupe engine. But one thing, you know, that, um, you know, Impala is really tied to Cloudera and the Cloudera uh, engine. Um, that's one thing to take into uh, the differentiations between Cloudera and um, Presto. I mean, Impala and Presto is Presto, you know, it runs on Horton. It runs on, uh, you know, IBM uh, Big Insights. It runs in, you know, uh, Amazon EMR, et cetera. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's much more uh, flexible in that sense. Uh, one of the other kind of differentiations uh, between the two platforms is, you know, uh, Presto is uh, all ANSI as well as it can query other data um, sources, you know, MySQL, PostgreSQL, Cassandra, um, et cetera. And then I think one of the, the big differentiations between uh, Impala and, uh, and Presto is really the community. Uh, one thing that you really see around uh, Presto is this very, very large, uh, growing, robust community of, of users and contributors, um, you know, where you look at Impala, even though it is an open source product, um, you know, it's really just, a, a, you know, a cloud era type product. Um, but it is, um, you know, you know, when it comes to a, a SQL query engine, a, a, a SQL on a dupe engine is a very, very, um, you know, good, performant uh, query engine. When it comes to drill, um, we, you know, we, I really don't see or run into drill that often. I know that uh, Hortonworks is actually, I mean, MapR, excuse me, has kind of gotten behind drill as, uh, you know, each, each one of the distribution vendors kind of gotten behind a, a specific uh, kind of engine. We really see drill um, more often than not used for, um, you know, um, really uh, uh, schema on uh, read versus schema on write type uh uh, environments uh, where uh, you know it has that flexibility where there might, might not be a defined schema and it's able to query, but uh, we don't really um, run into it that often. Um, you know when we're um, when customers are asking us for you know a high-speed interactive uh, SQL Hunt dupe solution, um, it's not one that uh, you know comes up that often. Well, thanks both for uh, those very excellent explanations. Now, uh, John, you, you had a choice, uh, and uh, you chose to go with the uh, Teradata Presto distribution, but you could also have picked uh, Presto that's available on Amazon EMR. Uh, was there a reason you chose to go with the Teradata Presto version? Well, we're working – yeah, thanks, Bill. Yeah, we're, we're working – you know, we have a, a good relationship with – Teradata to provide features on the Presto roadmap. Uh, as I mentioned, for our use case, there, there's several features that are important from an enterprise perspective, and uh, Teradata has been, you know, very, very interested in, you know, working with us and to add those features to the roadmap. Uh, obviously, that the benefits us and it will benefit other organizations like us too. Uh, so uh, what we value is our, our relationship with Teradata to to really have uh, items on the press, added to the Presto roadmap that uh, really improves the uh, the enterprise enterprise capabilities of, of the product. Well, John, thanks for that uh, great answer. Um, and while I'm on that uh, topic, uh, how does Presto compare to Redshift? 
Yeah, so at, at FINRA, we, uh, we use Redshift too. We use them both. Uh, Redshift, uh, you know, as Mark kind of mentioned, some of the things on the Presto roadmap, the, the, there's certain workloads that, uh, that the Presto optimizer just isn't as mature yet as what's used in, Re, in, in Redshift. Uh, so those workloads perform better on Redshift. Um, but as time goes on, uh, we are looking to, you know, move more and more of our workloads uh, from Redshift to Presto, primarily uh, because we want to be able to, you know, expand the, the areas where we're using our data lake architecture where we're able to keep the data on S3 and process it with query technology such as Presto. Well, thanks for that excellent answer. Uh, you know, the, the questions that have come from the audience are, are fairly technical in nature, and so let me just ask uh, several of them here. Uh, for example, uh, can Presto uh, have a single query that retrieves data from multiple data sources? Um, the answer is yes. This is Mark. Um, you can actually execute a query that would be able to join data um, from, let's say you have a MySQL environment and uh, an environment, a Hadoop environment. You can actually write a single query that would join that data in um, in the Presto engine um, uh, across those multiple data sources. That's kind of one of the, the, the neat and unique things about Presto is being able to join across multiple data sources. Terrific. Thanks. Um, and, uh, you know, in, in that same vein, uh, an audience member has asked about integrating uh, all of this with uh, Teradata Astra. Uh, yes. Um, if you have uh, Teradata Astra data, um, the way that you would be able to integrate with uh, Presto would be through our Query Grid software. Uh, Query Grid uh, software is a proprietary software that we sell that would would be that uh, data fabric that would enable you to query from Astra data to Presto, and then Presto could target any of the data sources that it uh, can query. Um, also, Presto, uh, you can query from Presto. In our Query Good 2.0 product that's um, you know coming out, you can query from Presto to Aster as well. So in that data fabric, you can query from Teradata to Teradata, Aster to Teradata, Presto to Teradata, Presto to Aster, et cetera, et cetera. But uh, Query Grid is the, uh, the software that would work in conjunction with Aster Data and Presto to make that available. Well, that's interesting. Oh, thank you. Uh, and, and specifically, what happens uh, if a query exceeds the available memory? Um, at this point in time, if the available memory, um, one great thing is that the, the, the query and the data is pipelined, so um, it's not like it, all the memory, all the data has to be held in, in memory uh, as one big chunk um, all the time. But if, if, uh, if the query um, exceeds, um, the intermediate result set exceeds memory, then the query would fail at this point in time. As John mentioned, um, and you know, uh, we do have on the roadmap, and as I mentioned earlier, we do have on the roadmap an intermediate result set spill to disk that we're working on uh, right now that we are going to be contributing to the community. But I think John had some insight into um, his workloads and you know, if they really, you know, in real world, do they really exceed uh, memory? Yeah, maybe just, uh, thanks, this is John. Just, just to add to that, as I mentioned before, uh, for our interactive uh, workload where people are coming in and doing ad hoc queries against you know, two, two petabytes of data spanning several years out there on S3, uh, in our cluster configuration of 120 R3, 4, uh, 2X larges, uh, you know, it's a fairly memory heavy, memory heavy configuration, but our, our experience is that there are very, very few queries that people execute are executing uh, that, that won't successfully complete. Uh, there's a few, you know, really big, gnarly queries, and, and for those, we, we still use Hive, but the, the vast majority of queries that people are, are, are running, you know, to, to do their work here and going across those, those large sets of data, and some of them are fairly complex queries, uh, you know, run, run fine within the memory configuration, and, and we have no issues, so. Well, Mark, John, thank you both for some great answers to some very good questions. And for those of you that asked questions that weren't answered today, uh, we'll be sending all the unanswered questions to Mark and John and the Teradata team so they can follow up with you after today's webinar. Um, I have just a few quick announcements. The first is please mark your calendar for December 15th, and that's our next DSC webinar, which is Optimizing Analytical Insights 
data security and visualization be presented by Alteryx. Also remember that today's taping will be available for on-demand viewing later today, and you can find that on the home page of datasciencecentral.com, and that's in the webinar tab that's located at the top of the page. Well, this brings today's uh, webinar to a close. Uh, I'd like to thank our audience for their attendance and their thoughtful questions, and a special thanks again to Teradata for their sponsorship and our speakers today, Mark Shainman and John Hitchingham, for their insight into today's topic. My name is Bill Voorhees. I'm very pleased to have been your host for today's event, and I look forward to seeing you all again on December 15th. Have a great day.